Hello, and welcome to Legendary Africa, the podcast where a disembodied voice speaks about African myths, legends, and lore straight into your ear canal. That's right, there's no escape. You're welcome. So for those who have been listening to this podcast, you'll know about recent events. For those who are new to Legendary Africa, let me quickly explain. This podcast used to be hosted by two sisters from South Africa, the Shira, me, and my sister, Rushali. On the 8th of July, my sister and co-host passed away, having suffered from severe depression for more than 10 years. I announced that I would be cancelling the podcast as I couldn't see a way forward with it without Rishali. I received an unbelievably amazing amount of support and love from the podcasting community, both listeners and fellow podcasters. There's really no words for the immense gratitude which I feel towards all of you. All I can say is thank you and I love you all so much. Since then I spent a lot of time thinking about the podcast and about Rishali and what she'd be happy and proud of. Rishali loved the podcast and was always so happy when someone left positive feedback. Many people have told me that I should do what feels right to me, and that whatever I decide to do with it, I had their full support. My friends and family have actually told me the same thing. I chatted to my brother-in-law Ezekiel about this the other day. Those who have listened to previous episodes will probably remember us talking about him. He was Rishalia's fiancé. He helped me realize that continuing the podcast without Rishalia would not erase her or disregard her, but would actually honor the person she was and honor this project we created together. I guess I was... Just a bit, you know, I was a bit worried as to how I was going to continue this thing that we created together without her. Um, I didn't want to erase her memory. But actually, it's the opposite of that. Continuing Legendary Africa would actually help keep her memory alive. It's for this reason that I've decided not to change our podcast bio or our social media descriptions. Michelle is still part of this podcast. She's still the better half of Legendary Africa. She's the angel on my shoulder now. So yeah, I know that this may be confusing to new listeners because they'll be expecting two hosts as according to the bio. But I ask that you listen to the tribute episode and this episode as well before you listen to any future episodes so you can understand. For returning listeners, obviously Legendary Africa will not be the same. There will probably be structure changes, no banter, just me. But I hope it's still informative and entertaining, hopefully a little funny, sometimes a little scary. Heads up, this episode is going to be kind of creepy, so if you don't like that sort of stuff, I would head out right now. Okay, so now that I've most likely chased any new listeners away, let's get on to today's story. So, the thing is that today is one month. It's one whole month since she passed away. And that's actually why I wanted to release an episode today, because, you know, instead of it being a day of... I mean, obviously it's going to be a day of sadness, but I wanted it also to be a day of celebration, to celebrate who she was. So, this episode is for you, Charlie. And since you loved ghost stories and haunted house legends, I'm going to tell you about the haunted ruin of Kempton Park Hospital. <laughs> Let me just give you a bit of history before we start. So Kempton Park Hospital was built in either 1976 or 1978. The exact year is unclear, so that really doesn't bode well. Operating in Kempton Park, Johannesburg, the hospital was highly renowned as one of the best medical facilities in South Africa. It held over 300 beds and 9 operating theatres, x-ray machines, CAT scanners, ultrasound machines, and over 400 incubators. So what happened? On the 26th of December, 1996, the day after Christmas, the hospital closed down without a proper explanation. Everything which was inside the hospital stayed where it was. The beds, the machines, the lights. Millions and millions of rands worth of medical equipment was left abandoned. The mayor of Johannesburg at the time claimed that the hospital was underused and in a poor location which led to the closure of the facility. However, many believe his explanation was vague and didn't match up with the facts at the time regarding hospital loads. The government tried to reopen the hospital many times over the years, even as late as 2015. However, to this date, the hospital remains closed and deserted. So, what is the hospital like now? Let me walk you through it. Two wheelchairs lie lopsided in the entrance. Going inside, you'll find state-of-the-art tech now in disrepair. There is no electricity, and you have to explore the ruins with a torch or the flashlight on your phone. According to one visitor who was reportedly born in the hospital in 1991, you'll find a jar of kidneys on the floor, purple graffiti on the wall, and an unpleasant smell in the air. As you go into each room, you'll find abandoned hospital equipment, metal beds lying around, dialysis machines on the floor, operating tables, and some are even haphazardly strewn across the corridors. 
Cabinets are still stuffed full of old medical records, now decaying. Glass lies everywhere on the floor, and what looks like blood is splattered on the walls next to the graffiti. There are macabre illustrations of girls in bikinis with their eyes scratched out. There are operating tables with heart monitors, and equipment repaired as if the hospital is just waiting, just in case someone comes in with a body. A room lies empty, except for a single small chair, presumably for a baby. The morgue has twelve neat chambers in it. Their doors, however, have long been removed, and the large slab in the middle of the room has been broken at some point. Lights lie broken on the floor or dangle from the ceiling. Down a pitch-black passage, you'll stumble into another wheelchair lying lopsided against the wall, as if someone pushed it out of the way in a hurry. Only the children's section of the hospital seems to be in a somewhat better condition. As you walk through the hospital, you'll realize that doors and windows are either broken or lie open, letting in the cold wind, allowing doors to slam and open at any time. You'll stumble into empty beer bottles, squash cigarette packs underneath your shoes, and notice several vandalized items lying about, evidence of visitors from before the security was put in place, or perhaps those who snuck past guards who are likely apprehensive to patrol the entire dark building by themselves. Perhaps if you stay there long enough past midnight, you'll hear babies crying, and a young woman screaming in the night. You may see a figure of a man roaming the corridors. You may hear doors open and creak shut. Perhaps someone breathing on you. If you try to take pictures, some of them will most likely be obscured by a strange white light that you cannot explain. In one corridor, you'll come across a bunch of incubators in a room. Next to the incubators, you'll find a metal cage holding a tiny Bible, which sits locked up. If I were you, I would hurry out of that hospital. So that is the legend of the Kempton Park Hospital in Johannesburg, South Africa. My sources are iol.co.za, citizen.co.za, mysteriesunsolved.com, and girl in the blue. Oh no, sorry, it's girl in blue jeans.com. I'm actually going to link one of the sources in the description below, the citizen.co.za, um, on social media as well, because you guys have to see the photos they took of the hospital. They're kind of grim, spooky. Like, seriously, it gives you bad vibes, so if you're easily spooked, disclaimer, watch out. So that about wraps up today's, I'm going to call it a mini-sode, because it's super, super, super short, especially compared to the long-ass episodes that we used to do. But it's not really a proper episode today. I can't quite do the entire thing as yet. Hopefully next time we'll be back to the uh, normal sort of thing. But thank you for listening and joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I think Charlie would have had a lot of fun with this one. Remember to subscribe to Legendary Africa wherever you listen. iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, wherever. And share with your friends, family, and assorted pets. We also have a YouTube channel. Go check it out. It'll be updated relatively regularly with podcast ep- episodes and other random stuff. Check us out at @legendarypod on Instagram and at @legendarypod1 on Twitter. I'll see you next Saturday with an all-new ancient myth, legend, or folktale from our beautiful continent of Africa. Until then, tell your loved ones you love them, thank the angel on your shoulder, stay safe, stay sexy, and stay legendary. Bye!